All right, this is the tutorial for the quad draw assignment, and you'll see in Canvas there is a dog picture that we're going to use as a reference. So go ahead and download the dog JPEG and go put it in a folder. Then here in Maya, we're going to set up that folder. So if I go File, we're going to set the project. And then you navigate to the folder you made. I made a folder called Quad Draw, so I'll go ahead and click in that. And I have ones that I've, we've been working on in the class, so I'll just call this um, Quad Draw Toot for Tutorial. You go ahead and just call yours, you know, dog. And we'll separate it by days, even though this will be just kind of one video series. So once I've done that, I go ahead and hit Set which for some reason is not showing up on mine, which is odd. Oh, the reason for that is I need to do quad draw and then just click set. Oops, it's not like I was saving the file. Now I could save it. File, save scene as, and because I set the project, it automatically puts it in the folder. So now I'll go ahead and call this quad draw to for tutorial. You go ahead and call yours dog day one. So first thing we need to do is to make a plane up here. And I'm going to look at it in four view because I need to rotate it. So E on the E key. So I'll look at that and then I can look at my channels box to see that it was Z that I'm rotating. So I need to set that to a negative 90 degrees. And that's all I have to do. I just need to make sure that I'm looking at it from the side. That's what's important here. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to right click on it and hold and assign a new material. And I'll just go ahead and choose like a Lambert. And then you look up here, you'll see Lambert. I'll go ahead and call this um, dog image for the name. And then where it has the color, if I choose the checkerboard instead, I can then choose file. So if I choose file. Hmm. Interesting. No object matches Lambert 2 color. I'll right click, assign existing material, dog image, and try that again. Dog image, assign file, there we go. There's the image name and the folder. So I click on the folder and I click dog JPEG. And you might need to press 6 on your keyboard. And I'll just space bar so that the side view is in full screen. Now you can see that this dog is not. He's, he's the wrong direction. So if I'm still on, if you clicked away and you don't see this, you just click on this, go to dog image, click on this little black kind of play button, and then I go to this tab that says place 2D texture, and there is a rotate frame. So I just rotate it around. Looks like it's 270. I'll just type that in to make it an even. And there we go. And then I'll zoom in because there's no reason not to zoom in on this. If you right click and hold on it, you'll see there's an option to make live. So I'm going to make this live, which will then allow me to go to my, I think it's in mesh tools, yep, quad draw. I'm going to start with kind of the back of the dog and I'm going to click once, twice, three times, four times, then you hold down shift and it shows you what your quad will look like. So then you click. Now that I've drawn one quad, I just need to do them two at a time. So you do two to spaces and you press shift. You want to keep things quads. So when I hold down shift, right now all it gives me is one option. As things get more complicated though, you'll see that you have more options to choose from. So I'll do one more, start to slope it up. I want to make sure to have multiple rows into the head because when we model it, I don't want to just have one face to work with. So I'll come back down here and add to this part of the body. So I'll do, maybe I'll space that out a little more so that my leg will be, hold down that, do another dot. Now let's see, this is the part where things can get weird. If I chose this one, that would be bad. See how I've got, it leaves a gap up at the top. I want this one which would then allow me to place a dot and do that. So you want to make sure that you are choosing. So once again, not good. It leaves a hole in your mesh. You need to not leave any gaps. So just think of this as doing kind of like a, a 
really awkward checkerboard. You want to make sure that you have a square in every space. Also, if you find as you're working, you're like, you know, I should have put this down farther. Will you see how that turns red? I can actually click and drag it so that it's... And I like that better. Click on that, add the quad, click on this, add the quad. Um, I don't want to go too big, but it's always hard, to, you, you know, when you're making these decisions because I want to make sure that as I do the head that I leave space to work, you know, up. Yeah. So they will get smaller as I go up, but I just want to make sure as I click and hold down shift, and you might need to pause to kind of catch up. Yours won't look exactly like mine, of course. Just make sure that you are leaving room to continue going out with these. So as I go out, yes, they're going to get smaller. In fact, I'll kind of complete this one. But it is okay if it's a little small. And if you're having a hard time placing, you can just zoom in. Whoops. That way I can place them as I go. So there's one for that. No, see, and I gotta be careful. I think I might need to control Z back. Okay, I do just one there. There we go. And then I've got there. And I'll do probably two more and leave it at that. See, and and I can move things. So this one looks triangular, but if you look, I have four sides. So even though it's shaped like a triangle, it is a quad. Okay, so now I'll just go back and do the other part. So I'll go ahead and start coming down with the legs. It's okay that it's not going to necessarily be a perfect match. Also, I'm only doing one leg right now we will make it so that this dog has four legs later. So for right now, we're just doing one leg in the back and one leg in the front. Okay, so here's a part where I think I would, yeah, see if I click and drag that, move it along, it's gonna work better. And then connect that. And there's a good way to make my leg. Dots as I go. I think I wanted to do one more. Okay, good. And now I just have to do the tail. And of course, all of these will have the ability to move and adjust as we go. So even if it's not exactly how I want it by the end, at least it's close. And if I look at this and I think, you know, my dog looks a little on the skinny side, I'm not sure if that's how I want it, I could always, you know, add another row here. And there you go. Okay? And once again, if there's anything that you just think, mm, I don't like the way I did that, you can just hover over the corner and adjust that point right now before we move on. Now I would just switch to object mode. I'll also press Q so I'm out of quad draw. And you can see if I switch to my perspective mode, I have this dog. I can press six again if I need to see the picture. And if I go to window, go to outliner, you'll see that there is poly surface and poly plane. The plane is the picture of the dog, so I'm gonna select that and press delete. And now all I have left is the dog, which I can then use the extrude tool to extrude my dog out. See? And cute quit. And there we go. And we haven't saved in a while, so we should probably do that. File and save scene. Okay. Now there's a few things to do right now before we start to add. I'm gonna go and I'm gonna switch to the four pane mode 
and I'm going to go to vertex mode. And if you press F, it will zoom in on whatever you have selected. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click and drag to select the tail. If you look at it from the top mode, mode I can look at it and I can scale it in. Because if you think about a tail, tails are not usually that thick. And if I want to, you know, look at it closer now, I can press F again. It kind of zooms in on that. And if I press B, it'll do soft select, which will scale. Yeah, I don't think B is necessary. You can see these are the legs. We'll need to fix those later, but this is just the tail, tail we're dealing with. So if you think about a tail, it's pretty skinny at the butt. And then I'll just click and drag and kind of widen things out as I go. And then I'll start to skinny things up. And sometimes it's a good idea to be looking at it from different perspectives while you model so that if you're messing something up and you don't realize it, you can see it happening in the other views. So things are looking okay in my other views, so I think I'm good. I'm not worried about it. And, you know, maybe point that a little more. Because if you think about a tail, they usually are fluffier in the middle and then they kind of taper out. That's the bottom one, so I won't do that. Okay, so more or less like that with the tail. If I look here, I could select this one and just use the move tool to kind of move it up so that it was a little skinnier because usually the tail doesn't, you know, if you think about the dog's butt. And then I can bring it in just a little bit. And I think that's good for the tail. Okay. Um, I'll go ahead and do the same thing with the head. So I'll look at it from this perspective. Um, this is a good tool for this because I can kind of click and drag and do kind of a little lasso tool so that I'm getting kind of the neck head area. And I will F in top mode and use R again and scale it in. Yes, it's going to make your dog look really boxy right now. It's okay. So if I look at it pers from perspective, I can kind of get an idea. And I think that's okay. Looking fine. So I just shrink the head. I'll do the same thing for the muzzle of the dog. And in fact, I feel like my dog's nose isn't quite long enough, so I could go ahead and click and drag to kind of select the top, the front part of the dog's nose, and then use W to kind of drag it out. And see, I kind of like how that does it. And then I'll go ahead and I'll just kind of get the whole muzzle of the dog. And if you hold down shift, you can select some if you feel like it didn't select the ones you need. Or I could just go back to this and click and drag and draw around. I'm going to use R again to narrow it down again. Because if you think about the dog's muzzle, it is going to be a little smaller. You can drag it in. And I could even go ahead and drag on these fewer ones and, and shrink those just a little bit as well. Okay, kind of a little funky looking right now, but it's okay. We'll move on. We'll keep doing more to it to make it look more dog-like. So I'm going to go to this view now, front view. And I'm going to insert the edge loop. So that's in Mesh Tools, Insert Edge Loop. I'm going to click on this horizontal one because I want it to do vertical lines. Whoops. There we go. So think about the dog's legs. So that's about how wide I think the legs should be. And then I'll go and do the same thing on the other side. And then I'll do one in the middle because I'm going to need that in the middle to kind of shape my dog a little better. Then you press Q to quit. And we will continue on with this in the next video.